Corridor Crew has released a video where their lawyer is talking about the stable diffusion lawsuit. Let's look at that. Now back to fair use, okay? Fair use is an affirmative defense, meaning that it can't be brought by a plaintiff to initiate a lawsuit. It can only be argued by a defendant once a plaintiff asserts a copyright violation. And at the moment, we're still waiting on Stability's answer to the initial complaint. So it's likely that Stability AI is going to use fair use as a defense, but they haven't responded to it yet and as you've seen fair use is not something you can claim on your own it can only be used as a defense once someone says well you're breaking their copyright it's hard to conceive how they wouldn't make a fair use argument here so here's how that analysis might go by a court to determine whether or not their use of the lion 5b data set constitutes a transformative fair use the Lion dataset is a collection of billions of images from the internet that have been scrapped from the internet to train the stable diffusion model, but the stable diffusion model does not include these images. At its core, fair use is intended to prevent a rigid application of copyright law that would otherwise stifle the very creativity copyright law is designed to foster. To make a finding of fair use, courts consider four factors. Now this is the most critical part of how this whole thing will shake out, so don't fall asleep here. A failure to understand the nuance will ultimately lead to a failure to understand the conclusion itself. First, the courts consider whether the purpose and character of the new use is transformative of the original. Remember, a transformative use must take the original copyrighted work and transform its very nature to such a significant degree that the use no longer qualifies as infringing because it serves a new purpose. The interesting thing is you have seen right now that he's showing examples of fine art where the image used is almost identical to the original work, but it is transformed in an artistic sense because it brings new ideas, new information, new philosophical concepts to light. Culture and art needs to be able to react to things that are already there and cannot just create only new things without any reference. Actually, as a matter of fact, being referential to art that has existed before is a major element of arts and it would make art useless and pointless if it wouldn't have this kind of reference in it because then it would be floating in empty space you couldn't tell what it is about so the reference to original works is a very important part of art said just because a new use is found to be transformative does not guarantee that the new use is fair that's because the courts will also consider the nature of the original work the amount and substantiality of the original work used in the new work and finally whether or not the new use undermines the value of and market for the original the commercial value of the new use can't be one that undermines or replaces the value of the original work Instead, fair use requires something highly new, something original, a new purpose at which the new use is being directed. And lastly, courts always consider the prior precedent in making a determination of fair use. Well, nothing quite like AI image generators has existed before, and there are a multitude of cases worth considering, I find two in particular that stand out. One of the main problems here might be, and this is what you just uh, also hinted at, is that the technology is very, very new. So we don't actually know where the future use of this technology is going to be. And personally, I am under the strong impression that even artists, even people who work a lot with AI, under evaluate the actual purpose of what AI can be and what AI can do for us. Because in my perspective, we are still at the mindset where AI is creating an image and then that image is the final use, the final step as it would be with art because the artist is limited in his work power to create the work and then release the work. But AI is not limited in that way. So AI can change and adapt and individualize the image after it has been released, create versions of that, create adaptations of that. And this is for me one of the main 
uses of AI that it can create things independently of us, but with our guidance included. And this is very transformative because AI can do that, but art could never do that before. But this is not reality yet. And that might be a big problem because people are probably going to argue that this is also creating digital art and digital paintings and digital images. And they are in direct competition with the digital art that we have right now from actual human artists, because this is a very simplistic use of AI we have right now, but it's also the main use of AI we have right now. First, Perfect 10 versus Google. This case was brought against Google by adult magazine publisher Perfect 10, where Google provided thumbnail copies of Perfect 10 images through its search function. Perfect 10 then sued Google for copyright infringement, but the court found that Google's use of the thumbnails was fair use, primarily due to the highly transformative nature of the use, ruling that Google transformed the images from one of entertainment to one of retrieving information, and noting that search engine technology provides an astoundingly valuable public benefit, which should not be jeopardized just because it might affect someone's sales. That's pretty strong precedent. The second case is Authors Guild versus Google, which was brought by different groups of publishers against Google over whether Google had committed copyright infringement when it scanned and digitized copies of printed books into an online searchable database. The court affirmed a finding of fair use, stating that digitizing the books, creating a search functionality for them, and displaying only snippets of them in the search results was fair use. It also found the purpose of the copywriting was highly transformative and did not undermine the market for the originals, despite the fact that Google had a commercial nature and a profit motivation in the new use two problems I have with these both examples. They are very, very good examples. You would think, well, they are showing exactly these images in the Google search. They are showing exactly the content of the book. You can read parts of the book online on Google Books, right? So that would seem like uh, they are using exactly that content and then building a service on top of that. But there is a huge difference with that. Even if Google Books is selling books they are selling these books. They are not creating new books and saying, well, these books are very nice, but now we are creating new books that are actually nicer, better and cheaper. So buy our books instead of the original book. So it's not replacing something. It is creating a new functionality with the search. And this is very important, not just for Google, but for us as a culture, because as you know, today, there is so much information, you can't know everything. So searching for information has replaced learning information in a very big part. So this is very fundamental to the technology, the culture, the society that we have today. The question is now, and this is coming back to the argument I made before, when you look at things like Midjourney and Stable Diffusion, and it uses images and then it creates other images that are for the same purpose of showing you something nice and being a creative image and being used artistically as a creative image, a kind of the same thing, right? So the transformation here, I don't see as strong. So what does this mean for AI art? Well, as you can see, courts rely heavily upon the transformative nature of a new use, and I think the case against stability, if it doesn't settle first, will be no different here. I think overall, stability does have a very good argument for fair use because it appears that their use of the training images in the Lion 5B dataset is highly transformative, such that it creates a new purpose for the original images. I don't think there's much denying that. In addition, it doesn't appear that this new use by stability deprives the copyright owners of their right to control and benefit from their original work. This is actually a very good and valuable point here. How are the images that are created by Midjourney Stable Diffusion and other AIs that are completely different from their composition, from the artistic details, from the expression, how are they similar and competing to the original works that have already been created by these artists? Because they look nothing alike, right? So you also have to consider that you can only copyright things that already have been created, not what is going to be created in the future. So the argument is not here, will AI impact what's happening in the future five or 10 years down the line for these artists? Because of course, their process is also always changing because technology is changing. This is about the images that have already been created in the past. So how is AI actually 
impacting the sales of these specific works. However, given that this type of technology has never existed before, especially given how quickly it's developed, I think that as with the dawn of the internet, we need to be very careful in considering the far-reaching implications that a finding of fair use might have. Now, I do think there is a world where people are less inclined to desire the art of the artists who have work in AI image generating data sets. I think that that is a possibility that can exist. I don't think we're in that space right now, but I do think that is a reality. And there needs to be an absolute recognition of value that but for the sheer mass of data and the quality of images included in that data, stable diffusion would not be nearly as good as it is. The old saying in data science that crap in equals crap out is 100% true here. Now, whether or not that unfairly deprives the copyright owner of their right to control and benefit from their work, I do think remains to be seen. Interesting point here he's making is that he says that he doesn't know if this might devalue the works in the future, the interest in the works of the original artist in the future, which basically you could say is kind of saying, I'm not sure if maybe these artists might have a job in the same way in the future as they have right now. but. Personally, I would say to that, and I have said this often, technology makes things more complex. It requires more people to work on that. Look at movies, for example. In the past, it was a very cumbersome and slow process. You had to build very complex sets and models and matte painting. This has been replaced by 3D effects and visual effects that are supposedly easier and cheaper to create. But when you look at the movies we have today, they are vastly more expensive. They take years and years to create a lot more people are working on the same movies because it might be simpler to create the same effects from 10 15 years ago with the technology but of course our expectation in that art form has risen too we want to see more crazy more extravagant effects and 3d renderings so the methods need to be a lot better a lot more sophisticated and this requires more and more and more artists technology, computing power, and of course money to create these projects. But an important thing to see here, as I've said before, is that the industry itself is completely changing. So when you think about, for example, a video game or a movie as a finished product that has been released and then everybody is experiencing it in the same way, I don't think we will have this in the future because the AI can work without us around. So for a game or for a movie, the content can change based on the viewer the way the scenes are rendered, the way the characters look, the way the music is, the way the characters' dialogue works can be adapted live by the AI. And we already have examples where AI images can be rendered with 30 frames a second live to change the content of a video. Right now, it doesn't appear to be going in that direction, but we're very early in all of this. I mean, Stable Diffusion wasn't even released publicly until August of 2022. And this nascent stage of development may have an effect on a court's finding of fair use. Because once it's given, it's hard to take back. In addition, I pray that the lawyers on both sides of this are good enough to explain to the courts exactly how this technology works and we're not dealing with another Senate-type inquiry of Mark Zuckerberg. Well, if so, how do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service? Senator, we run ads. Oh my God. At the end of the day, I am thankful that this lawsuit is being brought. I know it sounds weird, but I'm also thankful that companies like Stability are pushing the boundaries of what you can do with artistic tools. And I think that this fight will ultimately lead to a better coexistence of both arts and entertainment and computer science well into the future. And that's good for everybody. But my friends, this is just the beginning. Literally, as I was writing this video, news broke that Getty Images is suing Stability in the United Kingdom for also alleged copyright violations. There doesn't appear to be any shortage of litigation coming, but perhaps, just maybe, if we can separate our emotions from it, we might be able to see that this legal fight is exactly what needs to be happening right now. 
I see it exactly the same way. We need this right now with the lawsuit, with other lawsuits that are coming to clear the path for the future and create this understanding. And one of the things that wasn't said in this video is this is only for the models who have used images that have been scraped from the internet without asking the right holders first. But of course, there's other models out there that are trained, other AI technologies out there that are being trained from the companies like Meta, Google, Nvidia, Microsoft. All of them are working on AI models, not just for image generation, for live video generation, for text, for audio, for video games, all these kind of things. And they are trained on different data sets, they are using different technologies. So so when this is cleared for the fair use and how artistic works can be used, can be integrated, can progress into the future, this is opening and solidifying the pathway for AI. So this lawsuit is not hindering AI to exist. It is clearing and defining the way that AI can exist. Because of course, this technology is too important for humanity overall for our next step of the technological evolution to be denied to exist at all. This is just about the artistic copyrights in that sense. But of course, as you know, there's a lot of AIs out there. Think about the Teslas as self-driving cars. That is an AI. So the future of AI is here to stay, but still it is important to figure out what is going to happen, especially with these AI image generators. Let me know what you think in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.